Good evening, Jenny. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, it is good to be back in Pennsylvania. So let me say, on behalf of myself and the first second gentleman of the United States, my husband, Doug Emhoff, thank you for the warm welcome. And let me just say, it's good to be here with all of the friends, all of the leaders who are here. I want to thank former Governor Ed Rendell, yeah. <laughs> Senator Bob Casey, who we will re-elect this November, Senator John Fetterman, <laughs> Mayor Sherelle Parker, and Chairman Jamie Harrison. And it is so good to be here with your incredible governor, Josh Shapiro. And I will say, Josh is a dear, dear friend and an extraordinary leader. He and I have been spending a lot of time together over the years. And I told Josh, look, I am so, so invested in our friendship in doing this together because together with Josh Shapiro, we will win Pennsylvania. We will win Pennsylvania. And I thank you, Josh. I thank you. So, so Philadelphia, I launched my campaign for the President of the United States a mere two weeks ago. <laughs> and it's, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. <laughs> and just last night, the delegates to the Democratic National Convention finished voting. And so... I stand... I stand before you today to proudly announce I am now officially the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. And so now we got some work to do. We need to move to the general election and win that. <laughs> and to all the friends, listen, we also need to level set. We are the underdogs in this race. But we have the momentum, and I know exactly what we are up against. Now, many of you know before I was elected vice president or elected a United States senator, I was an elected attorney general and before that elected district attorney. And before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. So in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who scammed consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say... Trump's type. So, but, but, let me, let me just say, let me say, hold on, hold on, hold on. This can't 
campaign, our campaign, is not just a fight against Donald Trump. Our campaign, this campaign, is a fight for the future. It's a fight for the future. And Pennsylvania, we fight for a future with affordable housing, affordable health care, affordable child care, paid leave. We fight for a future where we build a broad-based economy, where every American has the opportunity to own a home, to start a business, and to build wealth. Fight for a future where we bring down prices that are still too high and lower the cost of living for America's families. So that they have a chance not just to get by, but to get ahead. We fight for a future where we defend our most fundamental freedoms. The freedom to vote. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to love who you love openly and with pride. woman to make decisions about her own body, not having her government tell her what to do. So, I love you too. So here's the thing, here's the thing. Since the day that I announced my candidacy, I set out to find a partner who can help build this brighter future. A leader who will help unite our nation and move us forward. A fighter for the middle class. A patriot who believes, as I do, in the extraordinary promise of America. A promise, a promise of freedom, opportunity, and justice, not just for some, but for all. So Pennsylvania, I'm here today because I found such a leader. best, to those who know him best, Tim is, is more than a governor. To his wife, Gwen, he is a husband. To his kids, Hope and Gus, he is a dad. To his fellow veterans, he is Sergeant Major Walls. To the people of southern Minnesota, for 12 years he was congressman. <laughs> to his former high school students, he was Mr. Walls. <laughs> and to his former high school football players, he was coach. And in 91 days, the 
nation will know Coach Waltz by another name, Vice President of the United States. some folks, they're just getting to know Coach Waltz's story. And I'll tell you, he is the proud product of a middle-class family in rural Nebraska. He is a veteran who served our nation in uniform for more than two decades as a member of the Army National Guard, and he went to college on the GI Bill. He is someone who long before he entered politics worked as a teacher. When Coach Walls and his wife Gwen moved from his native Nebraska to Minnesota nearly 30 years ago, they both took jobs at the local high school. Coach Walls taught social studies, Gwen taught English. After school, Tim was the linebacker's coach for the football team. Where I've heard the stories about he had a knack for using the game of football to teach life lessons. He saw the potential and kids who sometimes didn't even see it in themselves. <laughs> Under those Friday night lights, Coach Walls motivated his players to believe they could achieve anything. And together, they defied the odds, hear this out, going from a winless record to the school's first ever state championship. wasn't only a role model on the football field, around that same time, Coach Walls was approached by a student in his social studies class. The young man was one of the first openly gay students at the school and was hoping to start a gay-straight alliance. At a time, at a time when acceptance was difficult to find for LGBTQ students, Tim knew the signal that it would send to have a football coach get involved. have said he made this school a safe place for everybody. In the high school yearbook, the students voted Coach Walls the, quote, most inspiring faculty member. And as I think everyone here can see, Tim Walls was the kind of teacher and mentor that every child in America dreams of having and that every kid deserves. The kind of coach, because he's the kind of person who makes people feel like they belong and then inspires them to dream big 
And that's the kind of vice president he will be. And that's the kind of vice president America deserves. It was Coach Walls' students who actually helped him decide to run for office. And he served 12 years in Congress, representing a purple district as he reached across the aisle to get things done. He was the highest ranking, he was the highest ranking enlisted man to ever serve in the United States Congress. and the top Democrat on the Veterans Committee. And he was known as one of Capitol Hill's best marksmen, <laughs> winning a bipartisan sharpshooting contest year after year. In Washington, Tim worked to raise the minimum wage, to protect the freedom of workers to join a union, and he cast one of the critical votes to pass the Affordable Care Act. which of course gave health insurance to tens of millions of Americans. I'm gonna tell you, when we win, Tim and I will continue to make the Affordable Care Act even stronger. <laughs> he will win. with on the other side. So on that last topic, if Donald Trump gets the chance, he will end the Affordable Care Act and take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. You remember what that was like? Children with asthma, breast cancer survivors, grandparents with diabetes. Well, Governor Waltz and I will not let that happen. Because we believe health care should be a right and not just a privilege for those who can afford it. As governor, Tim has continued to fight for working families. He secured paid leave for workers in Minnesota. And he refused, he refused as governor to allow any student in their public schools to go hungry for every child. And Tim Waltz and I, we agree about many things, including when our middle class is strong, America is strong. And strengthening the middle class will be my defining goal as I am President of the United States. So Pennsylvania, ours is a fight for the future of the middle class, and it is a fight for freedom. In this moment, we are witnessing a full-on attack against hard-fought hard-won freedoms and rights. 
take reproductive freedom. Now think about this. Donald Trump said he wants to punish women. And as a result of his actions, today in America, one out of three women live in a state with a Trump abortion ban. One out of three. Some of these bans go back to the 1800s, even before women had a right to vote. Think about that. Well, Tim and I have a message for Trump and others who want to turn back the clock on our fundamental freedoms. We're not going back. about Tim Waltz, he has shown up to stand against these attacks long before he stood on the stage with me. After Roe was overturned, he was the first governor in the country to sign a new law that enshrined reproductive freedom as a fundamental right. President of the United States, and we win majorities in the United States Congress, we will pass a bill to restore reproductive freedom, and I will proudly sign it into law. Tim Walls has also defended the sacred freedom to vote. As governor, as governor, he signed the most significant expansion of voting rights in Minnesota in over 50 years. And with Governor Wallace's help, when I am president, we are going to finally pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. So Tim is a hunter and a gun owner who believes, as the majority of gun owners do, that we need reasonable gun safety laws in America. So as governor, he expanded background checks and increased penalties for illegal firearm sales. And together, when we win in November, we are finally going to pass universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban. Through his work, Tim, he, you know, the way I think about it, he really does shine a light on a brighter future that we can build together. In his state, he has been a model chief executive, and with his experience, I'm telling you, Tim Walls will be ready on day one. In fact, when you compare his resume <laughs> shall we to Trump's running mate well 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 some might say it's like it's like a matchup between the varsity team and the JV squad. <laughs> so
So Pennsylvania, ultimately in this election, we each face a question. What kind of country do we want to live in? A country, a country of freedom, compassion, and rule of law, or a country of chaos, fear, and hate. And here's the beauty of our democracy. We each have the power to answer that question. We each have the power to answer that question. The power is with the people. We love our country, and I believe it is the highest form of patriotism to fight for the ideals of our country. That, that is how we preserve the promise of America. And after all, you know, the promise of America is what makes it possible for two middle-class kids, one a daughter of Oakland, California, who was raised by a working mother, the other a son of the Nebraska Plains who grew up working on a farm, It's the promise of America, because only in America, only in America, is it possible for them together to make it all the way to the White House. <laughs> And so Coach Walls and I may hail from different corners of our great country, but our values are the same. And we both believe in lifting people up, not knocking them down. <laughs> he and I, we both know the vast majority of people in our country have so much more in common than what separates them. When we look at folks, we see in our fellow Americans neighbors, not enemies. Not enemies. And so my promise to you is this. Our campaign will reach out to everyone, from red states to blue states. From the heartland to the coast, in rural, urban, suburban, and tribal communities. We are running a campaign on behalf of all Americans. And when elected, we will govern on behalf of all Americans. And so, with Tim Walls by my side, and with all of you at our side, let us fight for the promise of our future. And with that, I ask Pennsylvania, are you ready to make your voices heard?
President of the United States, Tim Wall. Wow. Thank you, Philadelphia. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for the trust you put in me, but maybe more so, thank you for bringing back the joy. I'm thrilled to be on this journey with you and Doug, this incredible journey. And Pennsylvania, I know you know this, but my God, what a treasure you have in Josh Shapiro. Holy hell, can this guy bring the fire? He can bring the fire. This is a visionary leader. Also, I have to tell you, everybody in America knows when you need a bridge fix, call that guy. And I think sometimes we forget, and you see people a little one-dimensional, but seeing a guy who cares so deeply about his family, a man with compassion, vision, and I'll have to tell you this, I know this from experience, there is no one you would rather go to a Springsteen concert in Jersey with than him, <laughs> than that guy. And I can't wait for all of you and America to get to know my incredible wife, Gwen, a 29-year public school educator. Don't ever underestimate teachers. And our two beautiful kids, Hope and Gus, I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket and to help Vice President Harris become what we all know is very, very good for us to think about, next President of the United States of America. From her first day as a prosecutor, as a district attorney, Attorney General of the great state of California, a United States Senator and Vice President of the United States. <laughs> Vice President Harris has fought on the side of the American people. She took on the predators, she took on the fraudsters, she took down the transnational gangs, she stood up against powerful corporate interests, and she never hesitated to reach across the aisle if it meant improving people's lives. And I want all of you to hold this and don't ever underestimate the power of this. She does it all with a sense of joy. I know a little something about that commitment to people. I was born in West Point, Nebraska. I lived in Butte, a small town of 400, where community was a way of life. Growing up, I spent the summers working on the family farm. My mom and dad taught us, show generosity towards your neighbors and work for a common good. My dad served in the Army during the Korean War, and with his encouragement, at 17, I joined the Army National Guard. For 24 years, I proudly wore the uniform of this nation.
The National Guard gave me purpose. It gave me the strength of a shared commitment to something greater than ourselves. And just as it did for my dad and millions of others, the GI Bill gave me a shot at a college education. My dad was a teacher. My brothers and sisters and I followed in their footsteps. Three out of four of us married teachers. It's what we do. For nearly 20 years, I had the privilege of teaching high school social studies and coaching football. Including winning that state championship. So thank you. Don't ever close the yearbook. Don't ever. But it was my students. They encouraged me to run for office. They saw in me what I was hoping to instill in them, a commitment of common good, a belief that one person can make a difference. So in 2006, I, 2006, I took a leap and I ran for Congress. And because high school teachers are super optimistic, I was running in a district that had one Democrat since 1892. Well, my neighbors graced me with an opportunity to represent them in the United States House of Representatives. I'm proud of the work we did there together. I worked across the aisle on veterans issues, on agriculture, and on ways to grow rural economies. I learned the art of compromise without compromising my values. And now as governor of the great state of Minnesota, I bring those experiences to bear in tackling the challenges that are facing our great state. Minnesota's strength comes from our values, our commitment to working together, to seeing past our differences, to always being willing to lend a helping hand. Those are the same values I learned on the family farm and tried to instill in my students. I took it to Congress and to the state capitol, and now Vice President Harris and I are running to take those very values to the White House. Now, Donald Trump sees the world a little differently than us. First of all, he doesn't know the first thing about service. He doesn't have time for it because he's too busy serving himself. Again and again and again, Trump weakens our economy to strengthen his own hand. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division. And that's to say nothing of his record as president. He froze in the face of the COVID crisis. He drove our economy into the ground. And make no mistake, violent crime was up under Donald Trump. That's not even counting the crimes he committed. You know, some of us, some of us are, some of us, some of us in here are old enough to remember. I see you down there. I see those old white guys. Some of us are old enough to remember when it was Republicans who were talking about freedom. It turns out now. What they meant was the government should be free to invade your doctor's office. 
In Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices that they make. Even if we wouldn't make the same choice for ourselves, there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. These guys are after my heart, Chent, and mind your own damn business. That feels good, so thank you. Look, that includes IVF, and this gets personal for me and my family. When my wife and I decided to have children, we spent years going through infertility treatments. And I remember praying every night for a call for good news. The pit in my stomach when the phone rang, and the agony when we heard that the treatments hadn't worked. So it wasn't by chance that when we welcomed our daughter into the world, we named her Hope. When Vice President and I talk about freedom, we mean the freedom to make your own health care decisions. And for our children to be free to go to school without worrying they'll be shot dead in their classrooms. By the way, as you heard, I was one of the best shots in Congress. But in Minnesota, we believe in the Second Amendment, but we also believe in common sense gun violence laws. <laughs> Vice President Harris' idea of freedom is a ticket for education to be that ticket to the middle class, not crippling debt. Air that's clean, water that's pure, communities that are safe. A place where we settle our political differences, not through violence, but with our votes. And that's what this election's about. What direction will this country go in? He's not going back. Well, Donald Trump would damn sure take us backwards. Let's be clear about that. And don't believe him when he plays dumb. He knows exactly what Project 2025 will do to restrict our freedoms. <laughs> to rig the economy to help the super rich. If Trump gets a chance to return, he's going to pick up exactly where he left off four years ago. Only this time, it will be much, much worse. Raising costs on middle class family. He will re repeal the Affordable Care Act, no doubt about it. He'll gut Social Security and Medicare. And when somebody tells you are, they believe him. He said he'd ban abortion across this country and he'll do it, whether or not Congress is there or not. Donald Trump's not fighting for you or your family. He never, he never sat at that kitchen table like the one I grew up at, wondering how we were going to pay the bills. He sat at his country club up in Mar-a-Lago, wondering how he can cut taxes for his rich friends. And I got to tell you, his running mate shares his dangerous and backward agenda for this country. J.D. Vance literally, literally wrote the foreword for the architect of the Project 2025 agenda. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale, had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires, and then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy.
That is, is if, he, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So, <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> I got to tell you, pointing out just an observation of mine that I, I that I made. I just have to say it. You know it. You feel it. These guys are creepy, and yes, just weird as hell. That's what you see. That's what you see. So you know what's out there. So say it with me. We aren't going back. We're going back. We are not going back. So we got 91 days. My God, that's easy. We'll sleep when we're dead. Over those next 91 days and every day in the White House, I'll have Vice President Harris's back every single day. And we'll have yours. You know how this works. We can't do it alone. We need you, each and every one of you. Go over to KamalaHarris.com, get on board, because we need you. Freedom, make our own choices. This leader, this compassionate, careful, joyous leader, believes in each and every one of you. My God, you came here tonight to sit at the very top because you love this country and you're not going back. She believes in the opportunity for every single person to join the middle class. She believes in the promise of America. We just got to fight. We just got to fight. Because as soon-to-be President Harris says, when we fight, we win! Thank you, Philadelphia. Thank you, Vice President. God bless America. Okay, there you have it, the debut of Tim Walls as the vice presidential pick. I'm Jeff Lauren for John Dickerson tonight, and you've been listening to the debut of Tim Walls as Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate. She, Harris echoed a popular message of her campaign off the top there, attacking Donald Trump's criminal cases compared to hers as a prosecutor. When Tim Walls got up there, he said some of the same things. Kamala Harris referred to Walls as a dad, husband, teacher, a sergeant, commander, but the expression she used most often was as coach Walls. She kept going back to that, talking about his time as a high school football coach. You heard we're not going back a lot, a familiar refrain of the Harris campaign. Walls said there toward the end, talking about Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, he says, quote, these guys are creepy, they are weird as hell. So as we see them... Get applause from the audience. We're going to bring in Caitlin Huey Burns from our D.C. Bureau to talk more about all of this. Uh, first time we're searing Walls and uh, Harris together. Caitlin, how is the political world reacting? Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Well, a lot of people around the country are learning who Walls is. Even people have, who have covered politics for a long time, he hasn't really been kind of at the forefront here, and he has now been thrust into the spotlight. And Kamala Harris identified the reasons why she picked him, talking about his biography, which you mentioned, that includes not only serving in Congress, not only serving as a governor, but also serving as a football coach. She called him coach repeatedly, and that'll be interesting to see if kind of that continues on the campaign trail. 
Kavanaugh. And when you look at kind of the candidates that she was considering, all of them were white men. Most of them were governors. And that's telling because Kamala Harris has said that she wants a partner in governing. So she alluded to that as well here. But this is a pick who has also gotten praise from people like Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin, which shows kind of the broader appeal that this campaign hopes he can have, not only appealing to progressives on policy and items that he's implemented in Minnesota, but also kind of that uh, at least appearance of, of, of a folksy appeal uh, in places like the Midwest. You also heard him contrast himself with J.D. Vance, and that is going to be, you know, a debate to watch if it happens, uh, you know, this contrast between two uh, political figures from the Midwest, and this is a campaign that will run through those Midwestern states. Caitlin, how did Tim Walls leapfrog a couple other vice presidential candidates and Josh Shapiro and um, Kelly from Arizona who arguably are bigger stars in the Democratic Party, bigger names, maybe better public speakers. How did, I mean, it, it, it all it came yeah. together pretty quickly for Tim Walls. Yeah, this has been a, an extremely tight timeline uh, because of all the reasons that we know. And you mentioned uh, Kelly and uh, Shapiro. They both also come from key battleground states. I mean, Pennsylvania is a state that this campaign absolutely needs to win in order to win the White House. But what was appealing about Walls to uh, Kamala Harris is something that you saw on stage there. They have a chemistry. They get along. They seem to like each other. They're actually the same age, just a few months apart. Uh, and uh, she has said that she wants someone who can kind of be in the trenches with her governing. He has experience in Congress, can go to the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue when needed, if needed. Um, but you also heard her describe there how she views this campaign, and she described this ticket as the underdog ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's significant, Jeff, because no matter all of this energy that we've been seeing around Democrats that has been lacking during this campaign, there's a lot of momentum here. The polls have tightened. But this campaign also knows this is going to be a very, very close race. So if you can deploy Tim Walz to the Midwest, um, have him talk to voters who may have otherwise not been inclined to show up, you know, that could be something that makes the difference here. Yeah, she said they're the underdogs, but she also says she believes they have the momentum. We're going to bring in CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes now. Uh, she's in Philadelphia. Uh, Nancy, also interesting to think about Walls's record, which is different th than, it, than it has. It's been different in Minnesota than it was when he was on Capitol Hill. When he served in Congress, he was considered pretty bipartisan. He's been considered uh, pretty liberal and pretty progressive as governor of Minnesota. Right, and I think that that's a reflection of the political rally, uh, political reality rather, first in his home district, which as he pointed out in this speech, had generally gone for Republicans before he was elected. So he needed to um, hew to the, uh, the, the political realities in that district, which was pretty moderate. Um, and that's what you saw from Walls on Capitol Hill. And then once he became governor and he had a Democratic state legislature, he really had a very different opportunity and a different mandate. And that's when you saw him sign into law legislation that expanded paid leave in the state, um, that codified Roe v. Wade, that expanded free school breakfast and lunch to nearly all children in the state. Um, and uh, what you saw here tonight was Walls really marrying his political views to those of Vice President Harris, because just as she sort of took a, a back seat uh, or, or uh, made a nod to President Biden's views over the past four years, as one must when one is the vice president, um, you know, there was no daylight here on this stage, at least between where Governor Wall stands and where Vice President Harris stands. Okay, Nancy Cordes and Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you very much.